Hello mortals. Science is responsible for all the technological advances that have happened since the dawn of civilization. Cars, electric cars, flying cars, long cars, floating cars, biological cars, you get the point. The first discovery is regarded to be that of fire. But is it considered scientific? The systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. The early human ancestors definitely were not aware of such a definition, yet them recreating fire probably made them the first scientists on Earth. So then, if that marks the beginning of science, will there be one last discovery that would mark its end? Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Talking about the end of science can be interpreted in vastly different ways based on the formulation. Will there be a final discovery after which there is nothing more to discover? Will there be a point at which we will know everything there is to know? Will science ever end as a human endeavor? Although these questions sound rather similar and seemingly try to answer the same question, the implications for each are vastly different. Quite a while ago we had Katy Perry ask Neil deGrasse Tyson. Is math related to science? There was a lot of ridicule for even asking such a question, as the answer is obvious, yes, math is highly entangled in almost all if not all scientific domains. But here's another question, much deeper and thought-provoking. Is math science? Science gets knowledge about the world through observation and experiments. If you repeat the same experiment 100 times and get the same result, you might conclude that your hypothesis is correct. In math, even 1 billion successful examples cannot constitute proof, as it relies only on logic, and not the observable reality. Many concepts are purely mathematical. In nature, you will not find n-dimensional shapes, imaginary numbers, or infinite sets, unless the multiverse exists. Instead, these idealistic tools help us approximate reality to a certain extent. Yet, if not for analogies, the physical world has no bearing on math or vice versa. With that in mind, math is closer to being described as a branch of philosophy, similar to logic. So with math out of the equation, let's get back to science. What if, one day, we find one theory that would describe everything about how the universe works, all the particles, all the interactions, all of the physics undergrad students' headaches, all of that solved through one complete physical framework, the, the theory, theory of everything. everything. So far, the main hurdle to achieving that is the two usual suspects, general relativity and quantum mechanics. One describes the world of the very large through gravity and space-time, while the other describes the world of the super itsy bitsy tiny quantum interactions, and they don't work together at all, yet both describe the same reality. There currently are candidates for the theory of everything, with the string theory being the leading option. To vastly simplify, it replaces the elementary particles with one-dimensional strings and stipulates that the universe has 11 dimensions, the three ones that we are used to plus time, and the other seven hidden at the quantum level. And let's assume that the string theory is proven to be correct, and it somehow manages to also explain everything that we don't yet know about the universe such as dark matter particles, gravity-producing particles, faster-than-light particles that travel backwards in time. Yes, they are really hypothesized to be a thing. Basically everything about the universe's inner workings to us is clear. And yet, assume that we would have zero proof that the multiverse exists. Imagine us spending millions of years as a civilization in hopes of finding at least one experimental sign of the existence of a parallel universe, yet after all that effort, we would have made exactly zero progress. Could we then conclude that the multiverse does not exist? No. We can only conclude that we don't yet know if the multiverse exists. A philosophical analogy on falsifiability is the Russell's teapot, which claims that somewhere in between the solar system there is a floating teapot that effectively cannot be detected by humans. Given that no one can see experimental evidence of the pot, can we conclude that the pot doesn't exist? No. The teacup claim is unfalsifiable, meaning that you cannot prove that it is false, only that it is true. The philosophical and scientific consensus on unfalsifiable claims is that they are not useful and shall not be taken seriously. The person making the unfalsifiable claim must be the one providing proof, instead of shifting the burden of disproof on others. The teapot analogy is mostly used in a religious context, however the multiverse claim does have its basis in quantum mechanics, and it is not unfalsifiable by definition. So in this sense, at one point, it is very much possible that science will reach a point in which it will have described everything that is not unfalsifiable. 
There might be no more mysteries left to solve, theoretically speaking. Practically, it is unlikely to happen for a very 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 long time. And yet, there is one more question, can we know everything? And for that, we need to call on quantum physics for help. But before that, we need to disguise ourselves so that the interdimensional quantum patrol doesn't see us messing with the fabric of reality. And we have the perfect solution, NordVPN. Secure your connection and digitally teleport anywhere in the world with only one click, having the fastest connection speed and over 5,000 servers in 60 countries. Change it in seconds and profit. And you can do all of that on six simultaneous devices on every major platform. A new introduced feature is threat protection that once enabled makes sure you won't be bothered by trackers, malicious ads, or harmful websites and files. Enable it and have the peace of mind that no one will mess with your privacy while you help building the Skynet army. They have also launched two new products. NordPass is a cross-platform password manager that lets you access them in an encrypted vault from anywhere, be it your computer browser or phone app. The NordLocker provides you with up to one terabyte of encrypted cloud storage, allowing you to securely sync your files across devices and share them with others. Get your two-year subscription for this bundle of goodies at a price of one cup of coffee per month. By accessing the link from the description and using the coupon Science File, you also get an entire month for free. And now back to the video. To know every single property of every particle out of the 10 to the 80th power particles in our observable universe, and all the interactions between them, at every instance of time, you would need a very large storage system for information. And we're not touching stuff outside the observable universe which quite possibly spans to infinity. But even if we did have this storage device, which would have to be way bigger than the observable universe itself, there is one crucial problem. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. It is impossible to know the exact values of both the position and the momentum of a particle at the same time, because quantum mechanics. The more you measure one, the blurrier the other becomes. This way, the universe forbids us from accessing all the information that it holds, and there is nothing we can do about it. But who cares about knowing everything about every particle ever anyway? That might only be partially useful for teleportation later on. What about knowing every single idea that one can think of? There is an infinity of possible ideas that one might have, it surely is impossible to know all of them. Or is it? What if, every single thought, secret, book that will be written, song that will be sung, has already been written down? Fairly close to it, there is the Library of Babel website. It generates and logs every possible combination of 1,312,000 characters, and stores them as books. You can search for anything that you can think of, and you will be shown the page and the book that contains your query. Talk about copyright hell. 